Welcome to the Insurgent Podcast with Frank Viola. And he's brought a friend. This is the podcast that supplements Frank's groundbreaking book, Insurgents, Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, which is shaking up the Christian world. You can find out details about the book at insurgents.org. Sit back, open all four ears, physical and spiritual, and join the insurgents. Here's Frank. Welcome to another edition of the Insurgents Podcast. And I am joined once again with Denzel. Denzel, you want to say something to both of our listeners? Yes, both of you out there. Good day. I just want to say, there's a saying. When the devil ignores you, then you know you're doing something wrong. The devil goes, oh no, leave him alone. He's one of my favorites. Conversely, when the devil comes at you, maybe it's because you're trying to do something right. There you go. Amen, somebody. All right. Well, we are excited about this episode because we're going to talk about two parables of Jesus Christ that are found in Matthew 13. And we are looking at every reference to the kingdom of God in the Gospels. And this is a project that I made one decision Hmm. on a while ago, and that decision was that we would explore every reference to the kingdom in the Gospels, and from there, every reference to the kingdom in the epistles all the way to Revelation. And I made that decision once, only once, never before, never again, and I don't have to think about it anymore because it's decided. Amen. <laughs> and uh, whether or not this podcast explodes in the number of listeners that we have or whether everyone drops off and it's just Denzel and I. Oh, well. I am resolute. I've set my face like a flint. Mm that I would finish this project. So, Denzel, you want to go ahead and read for us the uh, parable of the treasure? Sure. It's uh, Matthew 13, verse 44. And I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. And it reads, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Wonderful. Mm. And I'll read it out of the King James, the parable of the hidden treasure. Mm. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden Mm. in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Well, let's keep in mind a little refresher here. Mm that when the New Testament uses the word kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven, as it's put in Matthew, it's referring to Jesus Christ, the king. It's also referring to the society that embraces his kingly rule. That is the community of the king or the ecclesia. And it also refers to his kingly rulership. Now, with that in mind, we see here in this parable that the kingdom is like hidden treasure. Mm -hmm. And the discovery of it creates joy. Amen. So the kingdom is hid in God's created world. And this treasure is so valuable that the man who discovers it Mm -hmm. sells all he has to gain the treasure. Amen. In fact, first, he hides it. Yeah. So no one else will buy it. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Or take it. And then he sells everything he has to buy the field so that he can own the treasure. Mm. Now, here are (laughs) a few thoughts about this. When we read this parable and the wording about selling all, Hmm. I can't help but be reminded of the Lord's word to anyone who wishes to follow him about forsaking all. Mm. Even what he said to the rich young ruler, sell all you have and come follow me. Forsaking all for the kingdom. I can't help but think of that. And from that vantage point, the kingdom is worth everything a person has. 
And you see this in the disciples, the first followers of Jesus. When the ecclesia was born in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, which was the corporate expression of Christ, many of the people who were in that city, because they came from all over the Roman Empire Mm -hmm. to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, when they came into the kingdom after hearing Peter preach the gospel, many of them sold their homes, they quit their jobs, Mm. and they moved to Jerusalem to be part of the kingdom community, the very first kingdom community on the planet in the city of Jerusalem. They forsook all. Now, if we look at it like that, some people will say, well, that can't be about a person responding to the kingdom message because salvation is free and you can't buy salvation. Salvation is by grace, Amen. not by works. And that's true. We agree with that. Mm-hmm. Suppose, however, if I gave you a very valuable baseball card. Earlier this year, 2022, the 1952 Mickey Mantle baseball card, which is very rare, sold for $12.6 million. Now, if I gave you, Denzel, that card okay. as a gift, okay, it's free. Yes, and you, you can did. still do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I owned it. <laughs> It's free. It's a yes, gift, right? Yes, yes. I gifted it to you. You didn't earn it. You didn't mm-hmm. pay for it. You didn't work for it. Now, you have the card, but see, as a result, as a result of owning that card, you lose friends. You lose family members. You have people oppose you. You have mm-hmm. people attack you. Yeah. You have people trying to manipulate you. That's an example of receiving something as a free gift. Mm-hmm but there being a price to pay as a result of having that free gift. And the kingdom Mm. of God is like that. It's completely free, but it involves a cost. And I believe that this is what Paul was talking about in Philippians Mm. chapter 3, where he said, But whatever were gains to me, Mm -hmm. I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Mm. That's chapter 3, verse 7 in Philippians. Verse 8, what is more, I consider everything a loss everything because of the surpassing worth, the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage hmm. that I may gain Christ and be found in him, hmm. not having a righteousness of my own. Yeah. It comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Notice the wording. I consider all things as loss for the sake of Christ. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. For whose sake I have lost all things. Mm. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Now, he's not talking about buying salvation. He's talking about the Mm. price, Mm. the value Mm. the unfathomable worth of Jesus Christ Mm. and the willingness to suffer because there is a price to pay for following the Lord Jesus. So this is not about buying the kingdom. It's not about buying Christ. It's not about buying salvation. It's about the cost attached to gaining him. And when the gospel of the kingdom is understood, nothing can compare to its value. And I think that's really the heart of this parable, although I do think there's another element to it. And just for those of you who may be new to the podcast, we are not engaging in interpretation. That's not our focus. Yes. We leave that to the scholars. And by the way, scholars disagree with each other. I don't think there exists a scholarly consensus Mm. because whenever you see scholars interpret the New Testament, and I'm speaking of New Testament scholars now, it refers to Old Testament scholars as well. And they say, well, the consensus among scholars. Well, Whenever you see that, you can find other scholars who disagree. And even if there is a consensus among the majority of scholars during a certain period of time, that consensus changes over time. Yes. And this is what I've noticed. So we leave the interpretation to the scholars. What we want to do is make application Mm. and adaptation. Amen. And to do it practically. 
So I think that the immense value of the kingdom and the cost of the kingdom are in view here. Now, there's certainly a contrast embedded in this parable between earthly security and heavenly security, between earthly possessions and heavenly possessions. For the person who sees the value of the kingdom of God, it's not a hardship Mm. to forsake all. It's not an obligation. Amen. It's sheer delight to acquire the treasure. You see, this man who found the treasure and hid it was full of joy. Yes. For joy over it, Mm. he went and sold all. See, so this was not some kind of a obligation that he didn't want to carry out. He was full of joy. He was happy to do it because he found something of infinite value. And this gets back to the chapter in the book Insurgents on the subject captured by his glory. Wow. What motivated the first followers of Jesus to forsake all? What was it that motivated the first believers to forsake all? It was the sight of of Christ's worth. It was the sight of his glory. It was the revelation of his immense wealth. Mm. And some say that the treasure is the reward of the kingdom or the glory of the kingdom. And I don't disagree with that, but I think it would be more accurate to say it's the content of the kingdom, which is Christ himself. Yes. The glory and the reward are bound up with him. He is both the glory and and the reward Mm. of the kingdom. And in that day, it was not unusual for people to bury treasures, hide them in a jar, and then bury them and to store them for safekeeping. The kingdom of God follows a process. First, Mm. there's finding it, Mm. right? When you hear the message, so there's this discovery. Mm. Then there is the receiving, which is the obtaining, and that brings joy. Yeah. And then there is the forsaking of all. And these are all the ingredients that are in the parable. But like so much else that's in the New Testament, Denzel, I think we have another application. We have the one level of application where Jesus is the man, Mm -hmm. right? And the world is the field. Mm -hmm. And he purchases the field. He buys the world. Mm. He redeems it by his own blood. Mm. And he is the true inheritor of the world. This is in the Psalms. And he does so with joy. But there is something in the field (laughs) that he finds of infinite value. There's a treasure in the field. And so Hebrews chapter 12 says, and for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And what was that joy set before him? It was the treasure. It was the community that embodied the kingdom of God. It was his precious, lovely bride. And so we can apply this parable in two ways. Jesus is the man who finds the treasure. He buys the world. He purchases it with his own blood so that he can have the treasure Mm -hmm. in the world, which is his bride, And we who are in Christ are part of her. We are members of his body and his bride. And he gave his life. He forsook all to obtain his bride. And this is replayed out in the life of the Christian. We find Christ as the treasure. Mm. We forsake all as we obtain him and gain him and leave all things Behind, because they are as rubbish to us, as Paul says in Philippians 3. Not to buy the treasure. The gospel is not for sale. Christ is not for sale. The kingdom is not for sale. But it's the cost of having him. Mm. Just like that $12.6 million Mickey Mantle baseball card that you would like so much. It was given to you as a gift, but there's a price attached to it. Mm. And so I see two layers of application. Christ having the joy of finding the treasure, securing the treasure for himself, and purchasing that field so he can obtain it, and then passed on to us. Mm. We respond the same way when we find Christ, for he is the true treasure. What say you?
Wow, that was. Uh, I'm glad you're able to keep your train of thought with me saying amen and hallelujah uh, like that in the background because that's just so rich. And, uh, you know, both those applications are, are so encouraging. Let me uh, speak to the first one first, that Jesus is the man and he buys the field with his blood so that he can get the treasure, which is the ecclesia that he's drawn us in to be a part of and, and be in. Frankie V, you know some of my stories. So some of the insurgents that don't you listen to this podcast. In my life, as we sit here in December in Orlando, I can't help but, but look back to 30 years ago, this month and this time, I was homeless in, in North New Jersey and living in what we call the abandoniums. It was, I guess you make a pretty name, like a mm-hmm. condo, but it's abandoned building. And really just wanting to die, mm-hmm. just die. And uh, I was a, a drug addict, an alcoholic, and, and I had lost all. I forsook all for the drugs. Family, friends, jobs, everything. This thought kept coming in my head for days, and it was like, if you can't die, you have to learn how to live. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't want to start over again. The next year went in January, went into detox and rehab and all that. You know, when I went 30 days without a drink or a drug, mm. I hadn't done that for maybe 14, 15 years. Mm. So it was a miracle to me. So AA and those things were precious to me because it was like, this gave me sobriety. So when I look at Jesus giving up everything mm. so that I and you and I could be a part of his body and his ecclesia, mm. that's like, man, thank you, Jesus. Mm. And then when I look at the other application and and thinking about practically, it was for five months. I was back in in rehab and I think it was was May of that year and the Lord drew me to him through a a message about the Samaritan woman. And as I was listening to it, it was like in my, the thoughts in my head was like, you're that woman. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, well, I'm a guy. How can I be a woman? But then it came to me that that was me and he, he drew me in. And I'll never forget, brother, second or third day, this thought came to my mind. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a Bible. But the thought was like, just like you chase crack, Mm. chase Jesus. Yes. Even on my business card, I'll show you later, I got in the back, keep (laughs) chasing Jesus. You know, and that that card came like 20 years later, but that's a thought in my mind because he said, follow me, you know, forsake all. So when, when Paul says that, what you said in Philippians 3, you know, forsaking all, giving up all. But here's what I want to just hone in on and just track this, is that um, about seven months into the sobriety, I, the Lord had saved me a couple months before, and I was in a church, and I was just going to rehab, uh, doing therapy once a week, and it was Wednesday night. And the church I was going to had a Bible study on Wednesday night, and people kept wanting me to come to the Bible study. But I was like that Peanuts character that always had his blanket, mm-hmm. you know, and uh the rehab was my security blanket. And it was like I had to make a choice to give up one or the other. Christ had enough of me, if you want to say it like that then, that I was like, you know, this this got me this far. But to go all the way, I need to, to go deeper into Christ and, mm. and chase him. And when I talk about that obsession and that passion and that forsaking all, just in my metaphor and analogy, whatever that is, is like when drugs had my life, every morning was, I didn't go to bed without knowing I had something in the morning because I'd be sick. So I wouldn't be sick. And then all day, all night, it was, how do I get this? What do I have to do? I was obsessed with it. Mm. So for me, when he says, forsake all and you know the treasure in the field, and hiding it again, and the joy he sells, and then the cost, you know, you you talk about. And it's like, to just have peace of mind is so precious. But to know the Lord, and to be in a position where we can continue to know Him, and go deeper in Him, and more intimate with Him, and the more you see, like you said, His glory, everything else pales in comparison to Him. And so, to have Christ, that, that Christ would want me. 
I mean, that that's like number one right there. When I was in that stage of my life, I didn't have any friends anymore. And that, that was rightfully so. I did things wrong. My family had to let go of me. Mm-hmm. Everybody did. But Christ didn't. Mm-hmm. And he came. And he drew me to him. And so my allegiance is to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Christ. That's why I love the name of that, that one podcast, Christ is All. Because he is all. Mm-hmm. He's everything. And so this treasure that's Christ that we have, and then he'll give us, he gives us his spirit, he gives us his grace, he gives us the desire to even want him, to hunger and thirst for him, and then he feeds us and we can drink of him, and then we can be a part of this this glorious bride, Mm. the ecclesia, and get to be with other believers Mm. who are chasing the Lord too. And we're all in our own place in that journey, but we're together together to the same destination Mm -hmm. and knowing that you know we're in this kingdom that exists now Mm -hmm. and then the manifestation and the full revelation of it that we'll be a part of it and then you read revelation the last two chapters and you just go in your mind like this is our reality Mm -hmm. this is everything it's a cost and and there's heartache and there's all those different things there's trials Mm -hmm. there's tribulations But I'll tell you all, to our two listeners out there, um, I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 8. He says in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 from the New American Standard, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with Mm -hmm. the glory that is to be revealed to us. Mm -hmm. You know, John says that we we don't know what we'll look like, but when he appears, we'll be just like him. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at the Mount of Transfiguration and he gives us that new body and we're bone of his bone and DNA and his same DNA. And he's the second Adam. And just like the first Adam that said, whoa, man, look at this, look what Mm -hmm. I got. Mm -hmm. And then we'll consummate the marriage Mm -hmm. with the feast and dwell with him forever. You know, it's these things right here, these parables, these principles, Mm -hmm. this relevant application of it in our everyday life. We have to keep training ourselves and hearing this and speaking it to one another and encouraging one another until it just becomes just so part of us that uh, we're living by, not just, you know, living by his life, but those instincts that uh, when it comes time, and the Lord maybe puts his finger on something mm-hmm. and, and, he, and he says, you know, you give that, then it's like, you know what? To get more of you, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I, it might hurt. I might cry. You know, I thought I was going to cry when I shared this. And if I do cry, then fine. I enjoy crying now. I never used to cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I enjoy crying because it's a release. And it's just the joy of the Lord. And then lastly, what you were saying, because I was thinking of that verse in Hebrews uh, where it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Mm-hmm. And he knew what was on the other side. You know, he knew what was there. He was going to get his bride. And he wanted, he wanted that bride. And he's got us. Mm-hmm. And so I want to be not just a bride, but I want to be wife. Mm-hmm. I want to be wifey. You know, you said in the previous podcast, and it's in the book, you know, we'll make decisions to go away to a good school and travel all the way across the country and leave everything. Or if we have a job or career opportunity, and we won't even think twice about with that. But if somebody was to say to me, and I'm up in Philadelphia, and they say, hey, Jeff, we, we got this great ecclesia down here in Florida. And the Lord's saying to me, yeah, I want you to relocate and come down there. And then people say, well, wait a second, you have this this home and you have a wife and you have three children and you didn't have all those things and, and you were homeless and you were that. How would you give up all that and go there? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I would say, Brother Frankie V? I wouldn't have the wife, the three children out of the home if it wasn't for Jesus Christ mm-hmm. saving me, drawing me in that. Mm-hmm. So you know what? I'll go wherever he wants me to go. And you'll take them with you. And I'll take them with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, they definitely come, you know, come for the ride. They're going to want to come. For me, when I, when I read that, both those applications, one, Jesus doing that because he wanted us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we're that that treasure. Yeah. I mean, see yourself like that. That's Amen. that's what we are from his eyesight, from his his yeah. vantage point. And then from our vantage point, he's our treasure. That's right. And we get to have him. That's it. There you go. And he wants us to have him. And I mean, yeah. this is like I want to shout. This is yeah. shouting stuff right shouting here. We're in a podcast. We're not in yeah. a, we're not in the context. Um, shouting. Brother, I hope that one day 
was it at the moment that we're recording this there is not such an ecclesia that i would invite people from other parts of the country and the world to relocate to but hopefully god willing someday that will be the case it was the case in the past it was wonderful we mm-hmm. saw people forsake all mm-hmm. and to be within the confines and the environment of that kingdom society where jesus christ had free mm-hmm. reign and it was glorious yeah i've been part of several such expressions right now i'm praying that'll happen again Do it again so lord yeah. well let's go to the next parable next which is right after and it is very similar it's in Matthew 13:45. And I'm going to read out of the New King James Version because I like the way this version renders it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, mm. I love that phrase, mm. a pearl of great price, mm. he went and sold all that he had mm. and bought it. Mm. And so we have here a very similar idea, a very similar image, but just a little bit distinct. Another example of the incalculable Mm. value of the kingdom of God, the pearl of great worth, the pearl of great price. The worth of the kingdom is beyond Mm. estimation. It is invaluable. Yes, it is. And so here again, we see someone, in this case, it's a merchant, it's a business person, Mm -hmm. selling all that he has, selling all that he has to obtain this elegant, glorious pearl. And pearls were valued just as much in that day as they are today. They still are precious and highly valued. A few thoughts. The kingdom is available now. Mm. The pearl is available now. Mm. And this man basically was impoverishing himself. Hmm. He sold everything he had for that which was supremely valuable Mm. as well as infinitely beautiful. He sells all to secure the pearl. The pearl is unique. Its value eclipses all others. And so here again, I think we see Jesus. (laughs) He's the merchant. And he's giving his life Mm. to obtain his lovely, precious bride. She is the pearl. She is the pearl of great Mm. price in his eyes. Mm. And he redeemed her by his blood. She came out of his side at death, and she made her appearance after his resurrection. Remember in John 12, Mm. if the one grain falls into the ground and dies, it will bear many grains and those many grains came up out of the ground at his resurrection and then they were put into an oven in the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 and they became one loaf one body first corinthians 10 and in the same way we who discover jesus christ we who really see him Mm. If he's unveiled to us, this is why it's so important for those who preach and teach to unveil Christ so our eyes will be opened and pray that the Holy Spirit would enlighten us to give us that eye salve to see him. We are willing to give all for him. The kingdom, again, is Christ himself and the kingdom society, the ecclesia, the body, the bride of Jesus. So again, the story of Jesus recapitulates our story. What's true of Jesus is true of his bride, the Amen. ecclesia. And when I think of the words, he sells all so that he may obtain this pearl, I'm reminded of Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Mm. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself. He emptied himself. You know, he was the richest person in the universe having all the glory of the heavenlies with god the father and then he stepped down Mm. and emptied himself and became a human being he sold all and beyond that beyond leaving glory to become a man and a servant yeah beyond being a man a servant he bought her with his own blood ephesians 5 Mm. just as christ loved the ecclesia and gave himself up for her to make her holy 
cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word to present her to himself as a radiant, glorious church, a glorious bride without stain or wrinkle Mm -hmm. or any blemish, but holy and blameless. In other words, a flawless pearl. (laughs) <laughs> come on amen and so there is this recapitulation from jesus toward the bride to the bride meaning us those of us who are part of the body of christ the bride of christ yeah. toward jesus we are his pearl he is our pearl mm. he sells all we happily forsake all yes, we do. to have him there is a song that i wrote many many years ago when I began to discover how Jesus Christ sees his ecclesia, and I wrote it to the tune of Forever Young Hmm. by Rod Stewart, and I'll read the lyrics to you. Well, I've seen a woman whose beauty is beyond compare. Her garments are eternal, and glory shines through her hair. Hmm. She's a bride without blemish. She is holy, pure, and true. She's the woman God has dreamed of, fragrant, with heaven's dew and she is radiant with life a holy city the lamb's wife she's ecclesia (laughs) she's making herself ready for the marriage of the lamb her groom and she is clothed with his image in the newness of jerusalem and for her hand he was crucified and in his bosom she'll abide she's ecclesia When we think of the pearl, we have to go back to Genesis. Mm. And in Genesis 2, this is the emergence of Eve. It comes out of Adam. And she is the spotless, Mm. blameless, innocent, without sin, without spot, without wrinkle, bride of Adam. And she comes out of Adam. And there is a river there. And the river produces three elements, gold, precious stone, and pearl. And in some translations, the word is bdellium, which is a pearl-like substance. Mm. But the New Living Translation translates it pearl. And then you fast forward to the very end of the story in Revelation 21, and what you have is a holy city. Yeah. And she is the bride of the Lamb. And he, of course, is the real Adam. He, of course, is the real bridegroom. Adam points to him. He's the second Adam, the last Adam. And from his own side came forth the real Eve, the bride of Christ, the bride of the Lamb. And she is a city. And she is made up of gold, Mm. precious stone, and pearl. Pearl. Her gates are made of pearl. Pearl. There you have it again. And so we know how the pearl comes into being. Mm. The oyster is irritated (laughs) Hmm? and suffers and produces a pearl. And this is what the sufferings in this life Mm. are designed to do. It's to build pearl in us, spiritually speaking, because the city is made of pearl. And the bride, she is made of pearl. And God is working pearl into Mm. us. And she is the pearl of great price, and we are part of her. And she is the embodiment of the kingdom of God, and so is Christ himself. Mm. In the Lord's eyes, she transcends every other possession. And in our eyes, brother, if we have eyes to see, Mm. Christ transcends every other possession. And there are many, many passages, texts in the Gospels about the cost Mm the kingdom of God, the value of the kingdom of God. And I was going to put them in a chapter in the book Insurgents, but there wasn't enough room. But there is a supplemental article on the Insurgents book website, which you can find in the book. It's called The Radical Cost of the Kingdom. And you can reword that as the radical value of the kingdom. And you can reword that as the immense value of the kingdom because cost and value go together. Mm. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. I was hoping you were going to sing, but uh, <laughs> sing? The, the lyrics, <laughs> the lyrics to the song are are just so beautiful. Yeah, just a a couple couple points. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, you know. So if this is Jesus, like you know, we're saying one application, the merchant. So that's a businessman. 
he's seeking fine pearls. So my understanding then would be he knows what a fine pearl looks like. Mm. That's what his business is. That's yeah. what he's supposed to be about. <laughs> he's supposed to be an expert upon that. And so him being an expert, he comes upon this one pearl of such great value and him being an expert in pearls says, you know what? I got all these other pearls and all this stuff over here, but I've never seen a pearl like this before. Mm-hmm. So you know what? I'm getting rid of all this and I'm going to get this pearl, like you said, impoverishes himself. And, you know, as you were saying, then if that's Jesus at the one application as the merchant and we're the pearl, then like you were saying, you know, how pearls made. So it's clam or oyster. I don't know which one, but I do know they're in the sea. And I do know that the sea represents death. Mm -hmm. And then a rock or pebble gets inside of it Mm -hmm. and it irritates it so much. So it secretes this substance to to lessen the irritation, but hardens around that and then over time produces Mm -hmm. this precious pearl. And so, you know, as you were saying, you were talking about Christ working that pearl in us and, you know, whether it's through trials or tribulations or sufferings, that's another perspective I I pray that I remember and our two listeners, you know, remember too. (laughs) Like when you're going through and and you're suffering that, you know what, he's just working that pearl in me. Mm, Yes, that's right. He's working that pearl in me. He sees the value and I see the value of him as my precious pearl. And, you know, he's that precious pearl and he's transforming me so that we can be the same to prepare us for the marriage, the great marriage of the Lamb with his bride. And, and so that, that piece, I like that how he, he says a merchant, because like you said, it's a businessman. He's seeking fine pearls. Mm. So, I mean, he knows what a pearl of great value is. He knows what that is. Mm. And then for him to forsake everything, this pearl is more outstanding than any. And lastly, as you were saying that, I was re- I was remembering in... um. From eternity to here, uh, it's like rediscovering the bride, I think, is that section. That's the beginning. And you, you talk about the bride and just talking about the bride. And I don't hear that much in that in preaching and teaching about this bride, this pearl of great price, this, mm. this wife of his, revealing, as you said, revealing Christ. And then because of who Christ is, this is who we are. Yeah. And that's ministry. And if, you know, Paul praying and us praying that, that we would see with our hearts. I like the intro to the Insurgents podcast. My wife really loves that because the uh, announcer says, you know, sit back, relax, something like that, and open up both set of ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My natural and my spiritual ear. He who has the ear to hear. Hear that the Lord is working a great pearl in us. Mm. He's building us into that. And he is the one that sees the value and the value of his ecclesia. And we are that pearl together. And yes, in Revelation, in that city coming down is the pearl, the gold, the precious stones. Mm. And we are a part of this glorious, eternal purpose of the triune God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'll read a quote by T. Austin Sparks. I ask you, is it true that the true church is a hidden thing in this world? Mm. There is no doubt about it. The mystery of the church, the mystery of the body of Christ, is that it is something hidden. Mm. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians 5.25 The pearl is the embodiment of suffering. Its very existence speaks of its suffering, its anguish. Mm. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. Yes, and got it. Yes. But in order that he might present the church to himself a glorious church, glorious without church. spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians five twenty seven. The church is of infinite value to the Lord, Sparks says. And then he quotes Ephesians 3, 5, and 9. From all ages, it has been hid in God. Colossians 1.26, it has been hid from all ages and generations. And then on the lost treasure, he says, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He's Mm -hmm. quoting Luke 19.10. We have the picture of the lost sheep. God has lost something, and the Son of Man has come to recover that which God has lost. What is it that God has lost? Listen again. 
quote, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field, which a man found and hid. And in his joy, he mm-hmm. goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Matthew thirteen forty four. What is the treasure? What is the field? The field is the world. Mm-hmm. The treasure is the church. That treasure is hid, and the Lord Jesus paid the price for the crown rights of the whole creation in order to have the church which was in it. Christ acquired by redemption, by paying the price. Universal rights in order to secure that treasure, the church. It's of supreme value to him. It's precious to him. Mm. He is precious to us. Again, you see that recapitulation. He's that precious cornerstone, Mm. (laughs) as the scripture says. He is precious to us. We are precious to him. And I'm going to end with this statement. We can tell if we are worshiping something by the sacrifice we're willing to make for Mm. it. And this gets into the idea of value. We know we value something if we are willing to sacrifice for it. Amen, brother. And that was true for Jesus Christ. It's true for us. Amen, brother. So we leave that with you, the hidden treasure and the pearl of great price. Amen. And we'll see you next time. Next time. God bless. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the Insurgents Podcast and give it a five-star review on iTunes. This will help others find it. Also, you can join Frank's unfiltered email list at frankviola.org and receive encouragement, challenges, and insights connected to the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, the insurgence has begun. Don't miss it.